Now, when it comes to the highest rate of COVID cases, that dubious title goes to Imperial County, just north of the Mexican border. Journalist Ana Ibarra has been reporting on the situation there for Cal Matters, and she joins us now. Thank you so much for being with us, Ana. And maybe you could begin by kind of describing Imperial County uh, for those in our audience who may not be familiar with the area. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. So Imperial County is at the border down south. Um, so it's between uh, the Mexico border, Arizona, and then um, north of it is Riverside and next to it is San Diego County. It's uh, about 180,000 people live there. Um, and it's a, uh, what they call a binational county. So there are a lot of people coming in and out for um, work. And so people may live um, in the Mexico side and work in the US side or vice versa. So there's a lot of uh, commuting going down there. And as we've been seeing in so many counties lately throughout California, there has been a real surge in coronavirus cases lately. And that has definitely taken its toll on the healthcare system. What's been happening there? Imperial County is uh, struggling for um, uh, hospital uh, resources, hospital beds, specifically ICU beds. And so um, not just the beds, but staff to tend to these beds. It, so it's, um, you know, starting in mid-May that started to see the, their hospital system um, started to become over overwhelmed and they started transferring patients out of their county. Um, at the beginning, it was uh, mostly their neighbors, right? So Riverside County, San Bernardino, and uh, San Diego counties. Um, but as those counties started to reopen and they also started to see their cases go up and hospitalizations go up, um, they uh, started to, to sort of, um, uh, Imperial County had to look elsewhere for, for beds. So, you know, they have, they had to transfer patients to Santa Barbara, the Bay Area, um, and Sacramento. Um, a lot of patients would all, some of these patients also went to Los Angeles County. Um, but sort of a lot of these counties have also, um, you know, paused a bit and say, hey, you know, our hospital resources, you know, we're, we're struggling with those too. Um, and, and we need to also make sure that you know, we they have enough for their for their own communities. And and as you mentioned, I mean, just to kind of picture it here, from Imperial County to Sacramento, I think you wrote that's something like six hundred miles. I mean, that is not a small journey whatsoever. Do you have any sense of what it actually takes to to transport? And you're not talking about you know just putting someone on a bus. These are people who are very sick. Right, right. And so that has been one of the the, the larger issues um, and and points of concern for um, health officials in Imperial County. You know. It's just never ideal to put a critically ill patient on an air ambulance. Um, and, and that's what's had to happen, um, you know. And so, they, yeah, that's that's been one of the concerns there. So, yes, you have ground transport when it's a neighboring county and air transport when it's uh, anything farther, like, you know, the Bay Area and, and Sacramento. And so, yes, the, that's been a point of concern for, for um, the health officials there and why the reason why they want to be able to sort of um, uh, build their own capacity rather than rely on transfers. But when you're talking about that capacity, one of the things I found really interesting in your story is that a lot of times, you know, there's all these numbers that are floated about and a hospital might say, okay, well, we've got X number of beds, which might make everybody feel comfortable. But just because there's that number of beds may not mean that they actually work out for a coronavirus situation, as you pointed out, because sometimes things like uh, the, the neonatal uh, in intensive care unit beds, the NICU beds get in that count. Explain what's going on there. Yeah, so that's where it gets a little tricky when we see the numbers, right? Uh, you know, uh, we have Governor Newsom, sometimes he gives us updates on um, bed capacity or bed availability. And that um, the, the state numbers um, tend to include, um, or as uh, they include neonatal ICU beds, also known as NICU pods, you know, those are for newborns. So um, obviously those can't be used for adults. And those are the adults are the vast majority of people being hospitalized for, for COVID. Um, so there's there's that issue. There's also the issue of um, you know the the staffing, and because you have a physical bed doesn't mean that you have uh, doesn't mean you can use it. You have to have a certain amount of staff to tend to an ICU bed. So that was one of the things that um, a hospital executive in Imperial County talked about. You know, he said yes, maybe we can 
bring in more physical beds, but what we need right now is staff. Anna, you wrote this piece before the holiday weekend, and it seemed like they were very much in a, a wait and see mode because as you mentioned, this option of, okay, well, we don't have enough space, so we will send these patients to other counties. That seems to be a door that's closing pretty rapidly. So do you have any sense of what the folks in Imperial County might do if the number of cases continues to rise? Yeah, so that's why um, again their focus has been to build their own capacity, and they've re like I said reached out to the state. They are working on bringing in more staff to their county um, using um, a sort of a. a going out throughout the state and finding anything, you know, like traveling nurses or staff where they can get it, right? There's also agencies for temp temporary staff. Um, and so that's what they've been working on to try to build their own capacity because, yeah, that, that is a fear. You know, they were, this hospital executive talked to actually told me, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to talk to you next week after the 4th of July weekend because we'll probably be so busy. Mm -hmm. So um, so that that was definitely one of their concerns. They're sort of you know, waiting to see the weeks after the 4th of July. And you also wrote not only about Imperial County, but uh, the situation that has been happening in Northern California due to an outbreak at San Quentin uh, Prison. Can you tell us a little bit about that? When I was looking into where Imperial County's um, patients were being transferred to, some were being transferred to the Bay Area. And um, I spoke to the, hop, um, the state's hospital association about this, and, and you know they they mentioned how that was um, a concern as well because the Bay Area is being um, impacted by the uh, outbreak in the San Quentin prison. So you know um, earlier when I checked this week, there were 62 patients um, that uh, or inmates from San Quentin that had to be hospitalized, and so th these are being placed in. Um, Usually they go first to Marin General um, Hospital in Marin County, uh, but they are usually, you know, um, uh, stabilized there and then transferred elsewhere because they, uh, you know, that one hospital can't take all those all those uh, patients. So uh, yes, it, as as those counties and or, or hospitals in the Bay Area counties start to to become more full and start to run out of their own um, hospital resources, so then you know that area sort of becomes um, there's a, there's a fear that that area might not be able to be used for other counties like Imperial County. Um, you know, it it starts to reduce where you can send um, these patients. And what was interesting to me about your piece is I have a feeling, Anna, there's a sense that a lot of us have here in California that we are very, we are kind of parochial in our view, right? We feel like, okay, here's the county that we're in and that's what we're dealing with. And okay, few, maybe our rates aren't as high as the next county over or whatever the case might be. But this really goes to show just how connected our 58 counties are. Did, did you get a sense of that, that, you know, no county is an island really in a situation like this? Yeah, of course. I think that is, um, you know, kind of one of the, the big things to watch for here because we, during this whole uh, response to the pandemic, you know, we've sort of been focusing on this local response and, you know, a lot of the, the decisions are up to counties. But when it comes to um, hospitalizations and, and the resources, healthcare resources. The the even before pandemic, you know, hospitals have partnerships, and if uh, you know, um, sometimes people or patients are transferred from one county to another, maybe not because there isn't a bed, but because there isn't the right type of bed, right? So you you do um, see that these partnerships and the counties do rely on each other uh, at times. Ana Ibarra, you can read her reporting at calmatters.org. And don't forget, join us here on Inside the Issues each Wednesday night as we talk to the wonderful journalists at the Cal Matters team. 